Hello and welcome to Learning Rust Programming Series. My name is Ashish and today we are going to learn what is RAII or Resource Acquisition is Initialization in Rust. Before that, let's revise something. All values in Rust are stack allocated by default, which means values can be boxed allocated on the heap by creating a box variable that we have seen in one of the previous variables. A box is a smart pointer to a heap allocated value of type T. When a box gets goes out of a scope, its destructor is called, the inner object is destroyed, and memory on the heap is free. RAII stands for, as I, as I have mentioned, resource acquisition is initialization. It is a programming paradigm where the acquisition of resources such as memory or file handles is tied to the lifetime of an object. Resources are acquired during the object's initialization and they are automatically released when the object goes out of the scope. So everything happens, memory allocation and deallocation happens automatically. In the Rust, RAII is a fundamental principle and ownership and borrowing are key mechanism that enable this paradigm. So ownership and borrowing is explained in our previous video. Link can be found in description section of this video. Rust ownership system ensures that resources are properly managed, preventing issues like memory leaks and data races. So let's look at the example how RAI works in Rust. So first of all, I need to have a structure. Let's name it as resource uh, with dummy data of type string. Then what I need to do is I need to have, uh, I need to use INPL keyword to represent. Let me correct my yeah, resource. So INPL is the way I'm going to implement self and other methods on this resource object or that we have seen in our previous video. So if you want to know more about IMPL, you can go to our previous video link. I'm going to mention in description section of this video. So here I'm going to represent function new, which takes data as a parameter and it returns resource. So here I'm going to print use println macro and so he, this is the se section where we are going to acquire our resource and let's initialize data is whatever parameter we got. So we need to use string from data, not the string. The next we need to do, what we need to do is, so this is a new method. So I can create resource object like this, resource new. And here I'm going to pass in as example resource. All right. Now I want to create one more method that is I want to simulate consumption of this resource. So let's write one method consume. And so we need self instance. I'm going to write print ln again. So here I'm, I need to write consuming resource and I'm going to access self dot data. Right. All right. So this is about consumption. If you want to, now here, if you want to have callback when this resource is going to get destroyed, when my, uh, when this uh, memory allocated on heap goes out of the score, then we need to implement one trait that is drop. So you need to implement drop trait like this. function drop and here I need mutable instance and here I'm going to write that resource is released self dot data all right so here what we are going to do we have resource dot zoom method so let's see if we get the callback. Finally, when main execution completes, then this drop should get called automatically. Let's see. Yeah, you can see consumption happens and when main exits, resource is released. And we are printing this data. So remember that, let's revise one by one. So here resource is a struct, represents a source that needs to be acquired or released. The new method is used to acquire the resource and drop trait is implemented to release the resource when the object goes out of the scope. When main function ends, the source object goes out of the scope and just automatically calls drop implementation and our print talent gets executed to release the resources. This ensures that resources are properly managed without need of 
needed for explicit deallocation of clean or cleanup coal. So RAII in rust enforced by ownership and the drop trade provides a robust and safe mechanism for resource management, contributing to languages focused on memory safety and preventing common programming errors. So this is that's it from this video. Please like, share, subscribe if you are liking the content of this video. And if you have any suggestion, please come. Thanks for watching.